Welcome to Live Your Passion. I'm your host, Alex Steven from Life Transforming Treasures. On Live Your Passion, our guests share their stories and challenges and how they overcame and embraced them. We are hoping that you will get some wisdoms that will help you on your journey. I'm an author, speaker, transformation coach, and my website, alexsteven.com, you could get free resources. Download seven keys to your dream lifestyle. This morning, a friend of mine, uh, my guest is Amy Mosher Berry. I had to remember Berry, she just got married. And um, I'm glad to have you here, Amy. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Alex. Yeah, and I'll have you introduce yourself Great. a little. Sure. Okay. Well, so I'm talking with you, so thank you very much. Yeah. It's really a pleasure. I know I met you a few years back, yeah. um, you and your lovely wife, and it's yeah. great to see you in action here <laughs> on your TV show. You're so inspiring. Yeah. Um, so just a little bit about me. You did mention I just recently mm. got married. I got mm. married to a great guy, Bill Berry, from, mm. uh, originally from New Hampshire, um, last August 8th. And um, we live up in Clinton, Massachusetts. I lived and worked in downtown Worcester for about 15 years. Um, so, you know, just when I was a few years old, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get back to that little story. Um, yeah, yeah. But I did, I grew up um, not too far from here. Mm -hmm. I like to say down Route 9 in Southboro, Massachusetts until mm -hmm. I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And then my dad decided we should move to East Texas. So when I was 15 okay. and it was the April 7th, to be exact, of my freshman year of high school. I went to Algonquin Regional High School in Northboro. Mm -hmm. And um, then we just picked up and uh, got a U-Haul truck and moved on to East Texas. So that was something else, Alex, I'll tell you. And it, it sort of, it really shaped me because I got to really break outside of my little central Massachusetts yeah. bourbon bubble um, <laughs> and got to see the world um, through very different eyes, yeah. and I'll just I'll leave it at that. But I, we did eventually come back. Um, mm -hmm. You know, graduated locally from high school, and I was the first in my family to go to college. I was fortunate to go to the University of Vermont or UVM mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. studied environmental studies and Spanish. Yeah. Believe it or not, and yeah. the joke was there was about five Spanish-speaking people in Vermont in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I did. I traveled abroad. Um, I sort of got the international travel bug. I studied in Costa Rica, and I've been to a lot of different places in the world and um, came back to the Worcester area. I was recruited to do an AmeriCorps position. Yeah. Um, AmeriCorps is like a domestic Peace yeah. Corps program. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was fortunate to pursue graduate program at Clark University, and I had been, you know, doing community development work in Worcester Since for the, the last 14, 15 yeah. years. Yeah, well, April 7th, that's a lucky day. That's <laughs> Raz and my uh, oh, anniversary. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so. wow, wow. Yeah, and I, I love uh, Burlington, Vermont. My yes. first job with Bank Boston as an auditor, they sent me there. Oh, nice. For a couple of weeks. <laughs> very walkable city. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. Lake Champlain. Lake Champlain. Yeah, very nice in the fall. Beautiful, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. So, um, you know, I know you have a great story. Uh, so we'll get, you know, get started with, mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit, you know, growing up, some of your dreams, what it is you wanted to pursue in life. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I was a kid that loved playing outside. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I could go just hours and, you know, it was me and I do, I'm the middle child, so I have a younger sister and an older brother. and. Looking back, I'm like, wow, I really sort of felt, I sort of directed my sister, kind of bossed her around a lot, actually. <laughs> um, but she was, um, I'll give her a, a shout out, Emily, or her mm -hmm. name now, Naomi. Um, mm -hmm. So she was just an amazing little sister, and we got to play outside a lot. And I just, you know, when in doubt, I would just, you know, get my hands in the dirt, and I'd be digging around. I'd be looking at insects and worms, and, you know, mm -hmm. I would um, do a lot of gardening with my family growing up. Um, mm -hmm. And the joke was, for some reason, I used to love scallions, so, like, the tops of onions. And yeah. I would, I would, when I was four years old, I would, like, find the scallions. I would put them in my pocket, Alex, and I would climb trees in our backyard, and I would be like a little animal eating scallions up in the trees when I was 
little and you know my parents would come out like looking for me <laughs> you know it was probably a meal time or what have you or maybe a little concerned where's Amy now and they'd usually look up in the trees and I'd be sitting there either reading or eating little vegetables in the trees so so that's, that's where the <laughs> green stuff came from <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny to hear me yeah. to say that and share yeah. that story because yeah. um, I would just really loved the simple things you know and yeah. we, we we moved when I was five but still within the same town of Southborough and yeah. we got to get a bigger backyard which was amazing and you know I was very happy just you know poking around in the backwoods and I'd be hiking around with you know especially my dad and my brother um, you know and and then we got a little bit older and I would you know have my sister do gymnastics routines and I would sort of direct her as to like what we were doing that day especially like in the mm. summertime when we had full yeah. days um, and it was just so imaginative and we would do you know plays in the backyard and gymnastics routines and even if she didn't want to do it I mean I would say okay I'm doing a bridge you're gonna crawl under me now and you yeah. know press play on the old boon box and yeah. you know we just had so much fun outside so I really loved um, just you know, not only being outdoors, but doing things to protect the outdoors and the environment. And as I got a little bit older, I realized, yeah. you know, not everybody thinks that way. In yeah. fact, um, a lot of people think that for progress sake, we need to actually pollute the environment and we need to, you know, we can't care that much about this tree or this open space. Um, we just need to develop um, mm -hmm. that area. And so that I started again from my, my move to Texas and then eventually, you know, I was able to go to um, environmental program up at UVM and um, I just started to, realize, you know, it doesn't have to be just the environment or the economy. And that was a later epiphany for me. I said, yeah. oh, we can actually, you know, have a healthy environment and economy. And I think we're seeing that more today, which is pretty seeing exciting. That, yeah, people more conscious. It's mm -hmm. more. Um, so you had that from an early age. Very early. Outdoors. Yeah. And I, I miss that too. You know, I grew up in the, in the, on the, the islands, Trinidad. Okay. And we were outdoors a lot, no winters there. Right, so, right. Um, I miss that and what they call now organic food. We grew up on right. that. We didn't know the word organic. So I, I miss the outdoors <laughs> yes. and that type of living. But mm. I, I live next door to Southboro now. So oh, <laughs> yeah. that's so funny. In Marlboro, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's pretty good. So you had those, you know, from growing up playing. Yeah. Yeah. You had those, um, you know, sort of love for the environment, right. so to speak. And, protect it and, um, you know, eating scallions, um, you know, <laughs> 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 you can't get greener than that. Right, <laughs> but, right, uh, I know. Yeah, um, all organic. So it's, um, it's good. So uh, tell us a little bit, you know, you had that dream, you mm -hmm. know, that, that sort of purpose, but you went on, you know, you went on yeah. to school, you went on to different things, different jobs, you know, before you got to really realize, um, you know, doing that sort of thing. So sh share with us, you know, your journey, sure. some of the different things, um, some of the things you enjoyed and some yeah. of the things you didn't enjoy. Sure. You know, and I'm not going to talk too much more about Texas, but I do yeah. have to say, especially, yeah. you know, for, for friends that may know my story or maybe you're just hearing it for the first time. I mean, that really impacted me. I was 15 years old and I just literally w dropped into rural East Texas where nobody even actually had heard of the state of Massachusetts. Wow. At that time, the children only, they learned Texas history and not U.S. history. And so I literally was in a classroom with kids who I, I couldn't understand. They were technically speaking English, but their accents were so deep that I, I really had a hard time understanding. Yeah. And the joke was, when I went to Spanish class, you know, being a freshman in high school, I started saying, oh, okay, I can understand. For some reason, the accent wasn't quite as, <laughs> as yeah. intense um, in Spanish class. But, you know, I mean, I, you know, I try to just keep it positive, but I mean, the the kids in this classroom I mean, they really had never gone outside of their immediate town mm -hmm. in that area um, they didn't know how to relate to me some people started calling me a Yankee they didn't even really know what that meant yeah. um, my dad it was also actually after he had retired from both ironworking as well as the Marines so he was building his flagpole business mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons he thought it would be a great spot very patriotic to mm -hmm. actually do his installations and maintenance and repairs and he would sell flags and I mean people actually wanted at that time the Confederate flag you know and my dad was in a little bit of between a rock and a hard place like that's yeah. not really what he had I mean mm -hmm. the it was arguably quite 
racist and sexist in East Texas at that time. Okay. Um, you know, and it's not to throw any one individual under yeah, the bus. I've come to learn. It was just, it was so eye-opening. Mm -hmm. I've never been the same. And in fact, I wrote my college essay about our experience. Um, I actually grew up in a mixed religious household, so neither of my parents were quite religious at all. It was really mm -hmm. about how they chose to treat one, an you know, yeah. one another and people in the world. Right. But my dad, um, you know, Irish, English, Catholic descent, and my mom is Russian, European, Jewish. Jewish descent. So literally, I mean, I remember like it was yesterday, Alex, where, you know, finally we had a couple of neighbors come over. It was a mother and her daughter and they were holding a plate of cookies, you know, about a month after we moved into our nice home there in East Texas. And um, they basically immediately invited us to their church. And so my dad, you know, thanked her very much. Thank you so much for that kind invitation. Um, it, he said, you know, that won't work out. You know, my wife is Jewish and I'm Catholic. And now down there, they're mainly Southern Baptist, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there's mm -hmm. many, many churches and it's mm -hmm. a big part of their life. Um, and basically the woman dropped the plate of cookies and she took her daughter's hand and they walked out mm -hmm. of our house. And so, I mean, I said, why did they drop their cookies? And I don't, I was so young, I didn't yeah, really understand. understand. I just think there was, it was hard to be able to, to relate. Um, you know, and then I just kind of, my eyes just kept like opening and opening. And there's yeah. a lot of different stories and insights yeah. that I feel so grateful. Like I wouldn't have realized, you know, how people think very differently. And it doesn't make them bad or wrong. It's just very different. Different, yeah. Um, and so I, you know, at a younger age than I would have otherwise, really started to open my eyes and just sort of, you know, do my part, you know, well, what am I here to do? And, yeah. you know, what am I passionate about? And how can I help people? Mm -hmm. And I remember being very intrigued and interested in loving, you know, people and cultures and languages. And, um, you know, it was, it was very different though, because for the first time in my life, I could remember being just ostracized. They, people didn't talk to me. Wow. Um, you know, so that was very difficult. And, you know, they prayed around the flagpole at a public school. Okay. And that wasn't technically mandated, but it was something everybody did. Yeah, yeah. So if you weren't like that, doing what they were doing, you were yeah, different. different <laughs> and it's more socially ostracized. Yeah. So it, it was quite, I'll just say eye-opening. And there's a lot that's kind of come out since then in terms of me working towards social justice and environmental okay. justice and yeah. making sure everybody is, you know, um, equally valued, you know, all yes. people, no matter what their background, interest, belief, mm -hmm. you know, as long as they're not hurting people, right. that we all have that right to be fully self-expressed and yeah. living the lives of our dreams. You know, as far as I know, we have one life. So, yeah. um, but it, it was, I never forgot that. And it, it really, um, it kind of stuck with me, but in a good way. And we in eventually did move back. Yeah, did move <laughs> back. And that yeah. experience helped you in, in how sure. you help and people yeah. know. So that's great. And, um, you know, there are a lot of things I, I love about Texas. And um, when I started to work out of Howard University, I started to work for Deloitte and yeah. Fish in Washington, D.C. Nice. And the first day they sent me to Houston uh -huh. um, to, to, for training. And, you know, we had a good time there training. And they had people from all around the country and some from around the world, too. And I remember we went out one night and they were carding people. Well, they carded me. I had to show my ID. <laughs> uh, the guy didn't want me to go in. And I, I said, why? He said, where's Maryland? There's no place. You know, I was living in Maryland. Uh -huh. I had a Maryland driver's license. He said, that's not in the U.S. So my colleagues oh my. had to tell him, yeah, it's, it's uh, part of the U.S. Um, so, you know, you talk about <laughs> how they don't know. How so I, I, I just thought it was funny. He let me go in. But, right. Um, you know, and I went back to Houston after that for mm -hmm. more training with Deloitte when I used to be a CPA in those days. So, yeah, but I, I like I like Texas. Everything is too. big. I do, too. I do, too. I still have family down yeah. there. So a shout out to my, my family in East Texas. Um, you guys are <laughs> awesome. I just was able to go see my family recently because yeah. I was down in Texas, actually, in Dallas for mm -hmm. a green energy conference with um, the company that I'm working with. We might no. touch on that yeah. later. So, yeah. um, But it was great. And um, actually, a special shout out to my great uncle, Donnell, who's going through some health troubles. And he's uh, about 84 years old. And okay. he and when I went down there, I really hadn't seen him for probably, gosh, it was over 20 years, 20 believe years. it or not. Yeah. And um, I asked him, like, what had he been up to? And I, I kind of figured Uncle Donnell would be talking about, uh, I don't know, you know, the medicines that he's on and tolerating mm. and, you know, just getting to and from different appointments, you know, not to stereotype, yeah. but, you know, and, and he says to me, oh, I've been working on an invention. We've got a patent pending 
product, and um, I'd really like to talk to you about it. And it was, believe it or not, in the green energy space. Yeah. So oh, he's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. that got me thinking, like, who, who else, especially those later in their years who have great ideas yeah. that yeah. might be kind of in their heads? So, oh, my goodness, like, how can we tap those entrepreneurial ideas um, before yeah. people pass on, pass you know? On. And that yeah. was very inspiring. I hadn't really thought about that before. Good so. visit, then. Yeah, it was a great Good visit. visit. Great yeah. visit. So uh, tell us a little bit. I know you got into government, and yeah. there was something you liked it. You stayed for I, a few years. I did. So share with the audience your experience, and then how things change for you. Sure. So in terms of how I got into government, I yeah. myself never thought I would actually be somebody in government. And yeah. as I um, did work in the workforce development space, so helping people actually connect to employers and find jobs, and later on to actually launch their own businesses if that was something that they were considering. So I worked at a place called Workforce Central Career Center, mm -hmm. one of about 30 one-stop career centers across the state of Massachusetts, and I was there from 2009 through the end of 2014. And if you think about those years, that was really a time locally and nationally where we were experiencing severe high unemployment. I mean, yeah. you probably have you know, friends and family, mm -hmm. highly qualified individuals that ended up finding themselves out of work. So mm -hmm. it was very rewarding in the sense that I knew it was a very um, needed position where people really needed that um, that support and that inspiration I would do a lot of motivational workshops mm -hmm. I think um, I know you know you've done a lot of inspirational mm -hmm. motivational things as yeah. well so like really getting people to see what their life is about and even though they're in transition the next door might be the greatest chapter yeah. for them you yeah. know so it was mm -hmm. really amazing I loved it um, and actually I'll just back up for a moment in terms of mm -hmm. how the heck I ended up in <laughs> yeah. government because it's not yeah. something um, yeah. that I yeah. necessarily saw myself but it was basically um, I'll say that if any, anybody from the audience maybe has um, arguably quit a job at some point in their lives and arguably too soon, I had decided, you know, I, I had a really cool, fun job, rewarding as well, at the Boys and Girls Club of Worcester, mm -hmm. and I still participate and volunteer with the club. I love the club, just mm -hmm. so many amazing things, especially urban youth. Um, and I said, you know what, for my own reasons, you know, I was over a year there and I, I wanted to move on and self-declared self-employed. I mm -hmm. said, I'm going to be a community development mm -hmm. consultant. Mm -hmm. Now, meanwhile, I quit too soon, not even to have put enough money sort of saved to even buy a laptop, Alex, right? Mm -hmm. So there I was, you know, I had my, my fancy graduate degree and there I was, you know, working very few years um, in the field and I said, I'm going to work for myself. But I didn't do the work you're supposed to do to yeah. actually position yourself yeah. to do okay by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up you know, leaving my job at the Boys and Girls Club and I launched Expressive Capital Consulting back in 2006. So just long story short, a lot of different community development mm -hmm. consulting projects. Right. Um, and so I, as it became, you know, 2006 and seven were pretty rough. I started getting some more contracts and learned a lot. I was doing better in 08, 09, but in 09, something passed my desk. I actually wasn't necessarily looking for a job at that time, but it worked out really well where I was able to sit with what's now the Central Mass Workforce Investment mm -hmm. Board. I wanted to ask them what they were doing to help small businesses go green because yeah. that was sort of becoming a little bit more popular, you know, yeah. you know, solar and wind and, you know, energy efficiency incentives, et cetera. Anyways, they said, well, we're not doing anything specifically right now, but there is this lead STEM coach job that, you know, you might be able to do a little bit of that green jobs development in the role. And I said, hmm, that sounds really cool. Um, I wasn't necessarily looking for a job because, I, again, I was building my consulting. Yeah. But I had my, my mom's mother was very you know, sick and she probably didn't have too much time and I really wanted to send some money down to my Grammy. We were very close growing yeah. up and so I was able to take the job, send some money to my Gram and visit her on a regular basis down in Florida. Mm -hmm. And then I also um, was able to be a first time home buyer back in 2009. So I was able to buy a downtown mm -hmm brownstone condo in Worcester with that job. Mm -hmm. So there were so many great things. I'm so yeah. fortunate. I'm so yeah. grateful for mm -hmm. the job. Um, and that kind of lined me up to be doing the work um, in workforce development and doing a lot of that career development, coaching right. and workshops, et cetera. So again, um, I, I lasted about five and a half years in local government. Um, so you enjoyed so what you were doing? I you did. Were, um, making an impact, helping was, people in need at yes. that time when the economy, you know, 2008, things went yeah, down you know, for a while. So you were adding value. Right. But then things changed. Yeah. You know, tell us about Yes, that. things changed. Um, as you mentioned, I mean, 
loved it. The first three years I was working at DOL, a Department of Labor grant um, mm. in the STEM field, so mm. helping connect job seekers mm. and employers in science, technology, engineering, yeah. and math. And I was between Worcester and Milford and Southbridge and you know, helping all sorts of people, um, very innovative, exciting work. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved into, you know, doing more with the entrepreneurship program. So actually launching what was appeared to be a bit radical back then. I mean, why yeah. would you sort of help, you know, long-term unemployed people with entrepreneurial skills? You know, mm -hmm. is it really realistic that they'll be able to work for themselves? So there was some, you know, critique, but I sort of moved it forward. I was always yeah. willing to stick my head out there and um, be the one that people came after if need be. Um, and then it was around September of 2013, um, the original man who had hired me back in 09, he suddenly retired. So I found myself in a situation where, you know, I look back and I'm like, gosh, he was sort of like my my innovation buffer. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the guy who, you know, when when um, need be, you know, he'd go to bat for me at City Hall, yeah. you know, and he would say, you know, Times have changed, you know, it's a new economy, and we have this strategy and innovation leader at the time, my name was Amy Mosier, you know, oh, yeah. who's, who's helping people, and we need to serve people in a new way, in a new economy. So all of a sudden he was gone. And, you know, a lot of the things that we were doing weren't something we were doing before I had gotten that job. Mm -hmm. And so I had, you know, a new boss, um, and I want to say, come to find out, like, not even a year, probably a several months after I left the job finally at the end of December of 2014, I found out that she actually lost one of her two children. So looking back, I actually now can understand why it felt like we didn't have a great connection. Yeah. Um, it was a very difficult year and a half or mm. so for me. I felt like, you know, she was sort of looking at what had been done at the Career Center and saying, you know, how does this person really fit in? Yeah. Um, and we just weren't clicking, weren't totally seeing eye to eye. But I mean, beautiful woman, good woman, and yeah. I ended up just basically, you know, for my own reasons. And mm. I think also, to be honest, Alex, having those um, aspirations to return to being self-employed entrepreneur yeah. and yeah. having that freedom again, because that yeah. was more sort of like the cloth I was cut from and yeah. more of what I saw myself doing. Um, and I, I basically just um, said to her, it was somewhere around Thanksgiving um, of 2014, and I just said, um, to my lovely boss, I said, you know, it felt like a breakup conversation, Alex. Yeah. It was like, it's not you, it's me. I said, <laughs> I've just, I've been struggling. I said, I've actually stopped liking who I'm being as a human being coming to this job. Yeah. I don't like anymore who I am here. And so I need to move on. And I'm so, you know, grateful. I thank you for the opportunity to work together. Um, you know, and I'm still definitely an advocate and sort of like a sideline supporter yeah. of the Career Center and the mission. But, you know, no bad blood. It was just sort of I had to move on. And I think she really got it, especially woman to woman. She yeah. got it. So, <laughs> you, you know, you added value. You enjoyed the yeah. job for over five years mm -hmm. or so. Um, but you made the decision. You saw it. It, it wasn't really you know, what, what you were doing and where you wanted to go. But right. you made that decision. Yep. You didn't stay that long and drag right. it out. You made the decision. You took the risk. Yes. And that's what people have to understand. Yes. Sometimes things happen. You said your boss retired unexpectedly. Yep. These things will happen. Unexpected things will happen. The question is, how will you react exactly. to that? You know, how does it fit your purpose and your passion? And that's what we're talking about. You have to mm -hmm. live your passion. So sometimes you have to step back mm -hmm. to move forward. Mm -hmm. And this is what this is what you did. So share with the audience a little bit some of the things you started. I know you were doing things at night after work oh, yeah. and really preparing <laughs> yourself. So this is what people want to hear. Okay, right. this is what you experienced. You made the decision, but they want to know how. Yes. They want to know the tools, the things you did so they could incorporate in mm -hmm. their journey whatever challenges they have and whatever obstacles, they might be able to use some of your strategies. Sure. So if you could share that, that would be great. Absolutely, I, I, and this was a scary time. Yeah. You know, I felt like I was so wrapped up in my job, and I don't know if you or, you know, some of the viewers, you know, if you've ever had a job that it's almost like it becomes just how people know you. Mm -hmm. You almost start to lose your own identity. So it's it, your identity, yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and I realized kind of, especially after the fact that that, wow, that needed to, to change because yeah. I'm more than just my job. But yeah. I wasn't totally seeing clearly. I was, I was um, so it was around September and it wasn't like immediately I knew just because there was a shift in leadership that mm -hmm. I had to leave. That wasn't necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. It took me a few months to realize that, oh gosh, I think, you know, we have, um, 
different visions here and I wasn't seeing a real career future for myself, Alex, mm. at the career center. <laughs> yeah. So that seemed quite ironic and I said, okay, well, you know, the only person that's really going to make a change here is me. I think a lot of people, they view people in government, um, you know, whether it's local, state, or even federal people in government, like, yeah. oh, they've got a cushy situation. Yeah. You know, they don't understand the struggle. And I feel like I used to think things like that. In local government at the program level, you're making very little money for the yeah. most part. It was much more, you know, um, high reward, low compensation, yeah. but overall well worth it, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But the irony of it is I was making so little, right, at the, in the grand scheme of things, I was able to just like sort of, like you said, stay up late night, get some other consulting projects under mm -hmm. my belt, get mm -hmm. those contracts secured. Mm -hmm. So I was doing, you know, both. I was working my job. I did reduce my hours, however, from 40 to 32. So I was still technically for that last year or so considered full time, yeah. but I wasn't doing the full 40. Um, mm -hmm. Usually it ended up being, you know, 32 to 35, but mm -hmm. I was being paid for the 32, which allowed me to then sort of free up some, just a few, mm. but some hours during the weekdays to actually follow up with consulting clients, which mm. may be nonprofit organizations or right. schools, helping them run various programs. I also, um, in fact, this is so ironic, the same original boss that ended up retiring actually reconnected with me and he said, Amy, they actually, um, they need some help in the urban studies department okay. at Worcester State University. Mm. And I'm thinking, done when am I supposed to do that, yeah. right? But I ended up, I made a bold request mm. of my new you know, employer, my new mm. boss, mm. and she was great. She allowed me the flexibility to actually teach um, in the morning and then come and stay later on some days. Yeah. So I was able to then start that, um, where I'm an adjunct professor still mm. actually at Worcester State University. Mm. I love that job. I love that position, mm. working with young people between yeah. 18 and 22 and some adult learners as well mm. in introduction to urban studies issues. So I had taken on that, um, you know, made that request. I was a little scared to make that request because I yeah. felt like I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to maintain consistency and be fair, especially to my other colleagues. Um, but I knew I had to put some things in place. So it's like yeah. you just get bold, yeah. right? <laughs> um, so between the consulting projects and then, you know, the teaching, taking on teaching, which I, you know, started out doing one class. I'm now teaching two classes on a regular basis mm -hmm. at Worcester State. And then I'm very much invested in a green energy business. So I'm right. finally yeah. really working back in the field um, of environmental and environmental education, teaching people that anybody who pays an electricity bill can, in a deregulated market, right? That, you know, and that's probably a longer conversation, but if you have energy choice, people can actually choose green energy from local green suppliers. Mm -hmm. And it's the same price or even less. Right now it's even slightly less over time. Oh. And so I'm getting to like teach people that individuals, organizations, business owners can actually all support green just through their own existing their bill. Yeah. And then if they wanted to go solar, that's sort of an, an um, additional, additional um, step in yeah. the green direction where they could actually be 100% yeah. green. And I'm very happy to, to sit here and tell you that on January 29th, um, my husband Bill and I, we actually got 23 solar panels. We, <laughs> we signed a, a power purchase agreement, yeah. um, you know, and so we are 100% green, green living in Clinton. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very um, proud of that proud fact. Of that. And so um, for, for the audience sake, when you're making that transition, yeah. as I hear it, you were putting in more hours Ooh, because yeah. in addition to the 32, then you started to teach yeah. and you were doing research and getting, you know, consultancy jobs right. during the night, you were putting in more. So, <laughs> so the thing is, yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, um, it's not always a clear cut no. transition. No, it wasn't. You, you know, it takes a lot of sacrifice, it mm -hmm. takes a lot of discipline, it takes a lot of persistence and that is what uh, we're hearing from Amy's story. So, so th this is what you did, you know, you, you took on more Mm -hmm. in order to get where you wanted to be. Right. So tell us now, I know you, you describe it as freedom, you're happy, um, you're married, you know, a lot <laughs> of things in your personal life, right. you're um, consulting, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, you love being a professor. So things open up, right. you know, for you. It's never done. Mm -hmm. it, it's always, you, we always see ways we could improve. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit, tell the audience where you are now so they could see from where you came from, the different um, obstacles and mm -hmm. challenges you had, the, 
you know, the extra time you had to put in yeah. where you are now, how you live in Oof. life. Well, <laughs> you know, in, in getting to where I am now, I mean, yeah. I, I absolutely, I was probably, I was lucky if I was sleeping four or five hours a night. So I wouldn't recommend that to the viewers, mm -hmm. but there is some sort of point where you just have to like get, get a little crazy yeah. <laughs> and just say, I'm not going to continue living my life this way. And there's nobody else that I'm looking at or to, to sort of like come and save me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was really like, I am really very much, you know, you know, independent. And I was proud of that fact. And I, that I think really fueled me to be able to, you know, work late into the night, get up, still go to my full-time job, you know, and I, I have to tell you, and I know you mentioned, yeah. uh, you know, being married, which is definitely a, a great victory and a feat, especially having finally, you know, met and waited for the right person. <laughs> but I want to say too, and, and not just for the women, but for women or men that are so focused on their professional career, um, you know, not so much in their 20s, but especially in your 30s, if it is something that you think you do want to, you know, on a personal note, get married, perhaps even still have a family or have other personal goals and dreams that you want to pursue. I mean, I just wanted to, you know, to say to, you know, from my own experience yes. that I mm -hmm. realized, you know, I wasn't making any time for dating and really dating the kind of men that I was sort of suitable mm -hmm. with, you know, and I realized, you know, so much of my life was being sort of just taken over by my work. It felt like there was no time for anything else. And it was exhausting. I wasn't taking care of myself. It was all about the work. So I, I feel like I sort of had an epiphany that that wasn't working for me. And that's not how I wanted to live my life, especially right. wanted to develop my personal mm -hmm. life a bit more. Um, and I just sort of said, okay, for the next five months, I'm going to be kind of psycho. <laughs> <laughs> I had to warn my friends and family. I had to be with the fact that I wasn't dating as much as I wanted to for a certain period of time. And I had to really put certain things in place and sort of ramp up, as you mentioned, the consulting, the mm -hmm. teaching, the green energy work, all on the side of my full-time job. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of prepped mentally some of the people, including you know my my mom and close friends and people that like are used to hearing from me a bit mm -hmm. more. And I said, I'm gonna, according to you, kind of go under a rock a little bit because I've got to put mm -hmm. some things in place to create my new life. Mm -hmm. So I think just giving people that heads up that I was really focused on getting back to being self-employed and really sort of reinventing expressive capital consulting after so many years of it being sort of under the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, and, and now, I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, on a regular basis, I teach on, you know, Tuesday and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really my teaching day down at Worcester State University. And, you know, I, I'm fortunate to have different interesting consulting projects. Um, one that I'm doing right now is in, in Worcester, there's um, people actually in this area may be familiar with a SMOC, it's a social service, mm -hmm. human service agency out mm -hmm. in its um, South Middlesex Opportunity Council. Yeah. And they recently have um, rolled out what's called SMOC Financial Services at what used to be the MLK, the Martin Luther King Business. It's now called the mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Business Opportunity Center, which is a division of SMOC. And they are now making small loans available. Mm -hmm. So for brand new startups, that was up from $12,500. And for the more established businesses, they're making small business loans at up to about 25000 So I'm sort of consulting with them to make sure that they're offering um, the right entrepreneurial curriculum, making mm -hmm. sure that they're sort of meeting certain gaps and you know, taking on opportunities within Worcester because they're less familiar with that market. So that's an example of a really cool um, consulting yeah. project right now. And then and again, enjoying all of that. Yeah, yeah. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. And but what I, it takes self-discipline. It takes a discipline. And what I'm <laughs> here you saying is, you know, there are times when you have to immerse yourself mm -hmm. in all this stuff. And, and what Amy is saying, there comes a time too when you have to you know, balance. Yes. You know, your personal, and and you're gonna spend a few months, you know, immersing yourself in learning stuff, trying to get, mm -hmm. you know, get out of the transition, get where you wanna be. But there comes a time when you have to balance your health, your personal life, your career, right, and all that because life, you know, time doesn't come back, so no we kidding. have to use it wisely. And, um, so true. You know that that's what I'm here hear, hearing from you, from your story, from your experience. Um, so I know you you given back a lot. You're in a lot of groups, yeah. and you given back a lot. You're doing your own, you have your own show. You yes. could talk a little bit about sure. that and um, some of the groups that you're in, so people could hear how you given back now, where you are sure. now in your life. 
Yeah, I mean, one thing I'm really excited about and honestly sort of, I'll say this humbly, yeah. proud of myself is that there was this favorite thing toward the end of my job with um, the city of Worcester. Yeah. And um, I was able to launch a TV show spotlighting at the time when we first launched, it was August of 2013, we launched the Exposure with Mosier yeah. TV show. Yeah. So that of course rhymes with my maiden name, yeah. so I'm you know, professionally, I'm Amy Mosier Barry, hence yeah. the three names. Um, so we were able to spotlight, at the time, it was work ready job seekers and early stage entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And when I wrapped up with that job, I said, this is something that I think has a big future, can help so many people. So I'm still going to take this on. And I tweaked the subtext. So now the subtext, the mission of Exposure with Mosier is spotlighting entrepreneurs, innovators, and good news. So mm -hmm. like you, Alex, bringing positive, good vibes, yeah. transforming those headlines. If we look at the world today, I could, I, I would agree that we need um, some more positive things. So mm -hmm. I said, let's keep the show going and sort of, you know, tweak a few things about it. But Basically, we've had 59 episodes available, um, all of which are online for viewers viewing pleasure. Yeah. Um, they can just Google exposure with Mosier. Yeah. Um, and I'm really you know, thrilled to be still doing the show. We meet every third Thursday of the month. It's in downtown Worcester. Mm -hmm. And people can definitely get in touch with me through, through my website, which is expressivecapital.com. And you'll find under entrepreneurship, you can click on exposure with Mosier and definitely connect with me. They can contact me there. Um, if they themselves are entrepreneurs or know people who are, mm -hmm. who are looking for exposure, um, on more Mosher. visibility. <laughs> and you know, we yeah. have had so many just incredible entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial minded people from young people to much older people yeah. and everywhere in between. So yeah. let's hear about those great ideas, especially if you are in, you know, more early stage startup or maybe you've been existing for a while, but you have a new program or product line that you want to get yeah. that exposure. I'd love to, to see more of those folks. Yeah, on that's the show. great. That's yeah. great. And hopefully one day I'll be on your show. You, so. Absolutely. <laughs> let's let's say it and make it happen. Yeah, make I'm it happen. booked out, believe it or not, until about July. Oh, so that's August good. or after. We'll yeah. get it we'll get after it done. Summer, after I'll be summer. Doing some travel. Deal. Too. Deal. And uh, you know, tell us about some of the groups. I know you sure. women's group and yeah. the Rotary and some other groups yes. where you've given back. Yeah. I'm very active with the Worcester Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, when I was in high school myself, I was fortunate to get a $1,000 scholarship from the Rotary Club. It was okay. in Northboro. And that always stuck with me, and that really helped me actually buy my books freshman year up at UVM. So um, back again, it was just 2013 as well. I don't know if you know a man named Dr. Satya Mitra. He is Name amazing. He's yeah. um, so he actually I w I joke that I was one of his sort of incoming group, his class of 2013 with the Rotary Club. Believe it or not, as president back in 2013, he more than doubled the size of our club. Oh, yeah. um, and for people that don't know much about Rotary, Rotary International is an international service organization, and it's professionals getting together in their local chapters, and they're all over the world giving back to their community mm -hmm. in various ways. And I, I should mention that we have our annual fundraiser coming up. It's going to be at the DCU Center in Worcester. It's uh, Saturday, June 4th from 5 to 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, definitely connect with me on that. We are actually raising funds and awareness. Um, particularly, our primary focus this year is regarding the awful opioid addiction mm -hmm. and sort of the, the need to, for prevention and education around opiate overdose. Mm -hmm. um, I always have trouble saying that word. Yeah. Um, but that is um, really important. Um, we've also helped with um, the Elm Park Bridge, the... Um, it, it was a brand new bridge that was restored. It was an incredible partnership, um, and you can go and see that at Elm Park, which is one of the oldest mm -hmm. public parks in the United States. Um, and it's named after Myra Kraft, actually, who mm -hmm. was from Worcester and had done a lot to give back. And it was a partnership between Worcester Polytechnic Institute, that's WPI, yeah. Worcester Technical High School, and the Rotary Club that helped to fund yeah. that. So, I mean, I can go on and on, but the Rotary is very important and near yeah. and dear to my heart. Um, and then you mentioned I'm also part of the YPWA, the yeah. Young Professional Women's Association. Mm -hmm. I like to believe I'm still young, Alex, so I'm still going to those <laughs> meetings. Young at heart. Um, <laughs> and you know that's a great. That's another one you can yeah. people can Google yeah. YPWA yeah. Worcester, um, and we do a lot of you know just awareness around community and economic development issues, and you know professional women coming together and giving back. Um, yeah. I'm also part of Adelante Worcester, which mm -hmm. is primarily for Latinos um, and people in the Spanish speaking or Spanish interest. So I myself am not um, a native mm -hmm. Spanish speaker, but it is a, a, um, a language that I've acquired in, in my journey. So 
yeah. um, I love that group is amazing. And then I'm also still, I give some time back to the Worcester Business Resource Alliance. And if folks want to check out any of the small business or entrepreneurial resources in the Worcester area, you can go to wbra.wordpress.com to learn about all the different um, resources, free and reduced resources, mostly nonprofits and government agencies that are out to support small businesses and everyday people like you and me. And yeah. a lot of these people have no idea that that exists, especially under one roof. Yeah. So. so great story. <laughs> I mean, from playing in the backyard in Cyborough, yeah. <laughs> going to Texas, coming back uh, to New England, going to school in Vermont. Um, really great experience. And the thing is, um, what we consider good and bad, you embrace it all. Mm, and it's part, part of your journey. And the, the, the nice thing about it is that you've given back. You mm -hmm. want to help the people who are being discriminated mm -hmm. against. You want to help the people who are facing unemployment. You want to help the, the person who wants to be an entrepreneur, follow their dreams, live right. their passion. And that's such a great story. So, you know, Amy, thanks again for coming on the show. Um, is there anything else you want to share with us? Any nuggets you want to share with the audience? Yeah, I want to say something just briefly. If people have been thinking they may want to travel, mm -hmm. I would say I have had some of my most profound insights and deepest epiphanies that have shaped my life in some of my travels. Even when I haven't had a lot of money, I've always been creative and sort of figured mm. out a way to get outside my comfort zone mm. and meet and greet and appreciate people from other places. Yeah. And especially to, you know, if possible, to get that passport if you've been on the fence. Um, and I know there's all kinds of crazy things happening um, in the world, but nonetheless, let's all sort of like, you know, like the show, your show is so amazing and I love the name of it, you know, Live Your Passion, yeah. which, you know, it's like, Connect with people outside of yourself, outside of your comfort zone, and mm -hmm. you just never know what collaboration could possibly yeah. open up, yeah. who you can help around the world. Mm -hmm. Now, today we have so much technology, people can truly connect around the world, but how can we be a gift to one another? Um, yeah. How can we help people, especially right. that are different, that come from different places, mm -hmm. but rather than focusing on the differences, let's focus on sort of our common humanity yeah. and bring that back on the scene, mm -hmm. right? I mean, and I believe our children children in particular, children all over the world, deserve a brighter future. Yeah. You know, enough of this sort of saturated headlines around, you know, one more killing, one more <laughs> stabbing, one more, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. just awful news. Yeah. We can do better than this. So I do believe that if people, you know, if they're on the fence about traveling, whether it's around this country or around the world, just do, so, even if it's a service project, or some people I know are jumping into Peace Corps later on in life. You know, do something that's going to have you see life from somebody else's eyes. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I'll just close up by saying one thing. Before I really knew if it was a good idea or a bad idea, right after grad school, for me, I literally bought, I pulled all the money I didn't even have, right? And I bought this little camper. I call it Marlena. It was a Toyota Marlin, a 1987 yeah. four-cylinder Toyota yeah. Marlin. And I went cross country, mostly by myself. I had, you know, a couple mm. of people on mm. different legs of the journey with me. Um, but I can't tell you, I look back, Alex, and in 2005, I was on the road by myself, February through May of 2005, 2005. Okay. I did promise my mom I'd be back in time for Mother's Day, which <laughs> I did. But I had seven times that I, you know, the thing broke down, I had to go to different mechanics, <laughs> yeah. and I, can't tell you how awesome now so many years later looking back and saying I learned so much about myself like I dealt with so many issues and problems yeah. on the road yeah. and I just kept moving forward and yeah. meeting a new friend and people would say oh this is interesting what research are you doing and I said actually it's not officially university it's like my own yeah, university of life yeah. so I mean and I've had people too that say, oh gosh, I wish I had done that. Yeah. So, you know, what I can kind of leave the viewers with is if there's, you know, at the end of it all, right, I, as far as I know, we have one life, at least yeah. in this form, right? And, yeah. and I, I don't know, I haven't heard back yet officially <laughs> myself. Um, but like, you know, fast forward and, you know, what's going to be on the gravestone? You know, what is that legacy that people yeah. want to leave? And yeah. are they taking one step? right, in mm -hmm. the direction toward their goals and dreams yeah. now so they don't have regrets later, later. right? Yeah. And I know my mom said to me, honey, do you remember when you were 10 or 11, you said something, I, I said something to my mom saying, mom, I don't want to have any regrets. 
And she told me that that really impacted her and she didn't know where I had come up with that. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, even though I certainly have my funky days and weeks too. We all um, do. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, that, that is something where let's come together and really move forward in the direction of our individual and therefore collective goals and dreams so that we don't have regrets at the end yeah, of it all. So yeah. why and not? That's the game I'm playing. That, that's the game. And, you know, as I say, and I tell <laughs> the people that I coach when I speak, um, when I do my TV show is get on a mission to live your passion. Love that. That's how I boil it down. Get on a mission. You know, it, it's your life. Like you say, we have one life and live it. Take the risk. Right. You know, and calculated risk, I must say, you know, not yes. just haphazardly <laughs> and um, enjoy life. Um, so, you know, thanks a lot for You're coming welcome. on the show. And um, what I usually do on the show, I, um, like to give my guests one of my books, Courage in Our Hearts. Um, forward is by Les Brown, and I wanna Beautiful. I wanna present you Aww. with this yeah, copy of books. And Thank um, you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And what I usually do in closing, I um, I read a quote, the quote for the day, and let me see if I could find. Today is today's quote is. I have learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Maya Angelou. And this is from my book, Inspirational Life Quotes, a compilation for your daily motivation. It's all on Amazon. And um, I have two other books that's on Amazon also, IP Goals Made Easy and Discover Your Inner Treasure. And um, also have, um, DVDs. This one is with a uh, interview I did with my son Larry Steven. Yeah. He's a professor and just got promoted. He's deaf and got promoted to um, deaf studies and uh, American Sign Language at Northern Essex Community College. Wow. He's the chair, the youngest, um, first deaf and um, and minority. So he's breaking a lot of barriers. And all this is on. Um, you know, on my website, you could get free resources and see what other resources I have at alexsteven.com. Uh, so how could people get in touch with you, Amy? Sure, yeah. they can go to my website at expressivecapital.com. That's expressivecapital, C-A-P-I-T-A-L.com. And they can also email me at amy, that's A-M-Y, at expressivecapital.com. Yeah, so thanks a lot for, um, you know, viewing today. and. Um, We'll see you next time on Live Your Passion. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Medfield TV, community shows.